Live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Wide scale testing for the coronavirus is coming to San Antonio and Texas. That's what Governor Greg Abbott announced today at a joint press conference with state and local officials. Not counting the Lackland evacuees, Abbott said Texas HSS has 57 confirmed COVID-19 cases between 15 counties. Garrett Berger joins us live outside the Emergency Operations Center where the governor made the announcement today. Garrett, these drive throughs aren't just for anybody, so tell us what's going to happen with this whole thing. You're absolutely right, Steve. Well, so far, the testing has been a little restricted. The governor says more than 200 people have been tested, though he does admit that's an outdated number from at least a few days ago. Uh, in any case, he does expect that number to skyrocket pretty soon. Here's why. The, government com the governor complimented San Antonio and its first drive-through testing in the state, though that drive-through is currently only for first responders, public safety, and health care workers. The governor said there will soon be many more like that drive-through here in, in the San Antonio area and across the state. He said they'll be run by public and private facilities as well as even FEMA. Doctors could also collect samples, he said. And it, in all, he says once this all gets up and running, he says more than 10,000 people a week could be tested. You're going to see uh, an exponential increase in the number of people who test positive on a daily basis. So people just need to be prepared and not shocked for the mathematical reality that once wide scale testing is now being implemented, there will be a lot more people who identify as testing positive for COVID-19. However, you still won't be able to just show up and get a test. You're going to need a doctor's order. And the director of the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District indicated that their drive throughs being set up later this week would only be expanded to seniors for now, though she said there has been there has been put together a testing task force at the emergency operations center here to figure out how to maybe adjust the testing criteria. Right now, they're only testing people with certain risk and symptoms. Now, the governor says the qualifications for getting a test may vary on whether you go through a private provider or a public health authority like Metro Health is. Now, the scale of testing may be growing, but the size of crowds is shrinking. The as the governor made his announcement, the mayor also issued a new public health emergency declaration that limits crowds of more than 50 people. He said that could be changed even more depending on the CDC's recommendations. Live at the Emergency Operations Center, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Now, in view of the situation regarding the coronavirus, it's far from courtroom business as usual at the Justice Center complex, but they are in business. Paul Venema now with what you should know about how the judicial business is getting done. The Justice Center halls are, for the most part, empty and silent. The central jury room is also empty and there will be no juries impaneled. There will also be no trials. Thank you. Please be seated. But that does not mean there will be no courtroom business conducted. Hearings will still be held, pleas will be accepted, and sentencing will still take place. We'd like to have our dockets continue. We don't want the uh, cases to get backed up. But at the same time, we're also very aware of the issues that are surrounding the COVID-19 virus. Handling the virus balanced against judicial economy is a challenge, according to the local administrative judge. Jury trials will resume as soon as possible. Until that time, all the provisions are being made to avoid speedy trial issues or other constitutional violations. And the Court of Criminal Appeals and the Texas Supreme Court have issued a joint order allowing judges to modify court procedures within the boundaries of the Constitution. Bottom line, it's simple. If you're scheduled for jury duty, don't show up. If you're on the docket, show up. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. People all across the country and across the world are self quarantining and now a San Antonio City Councilman is joining in on the preventative measure. District 8 Councilman Manny Pelais returned home from visiting family in Colombia. And as he tells Max Massey, he has no symptoms and has no knowledge of coming into contact with anyone who has the virus, but it's better to be safe than sorry. There's going to be a time when we look back and do an autopsy on, you know, how we uh, how we handled the coronavirus scare of 2020. Councilman Manny Pelias is now in self quarantine for 14 days after a family trip to Colombia, South America. I've uh, 
Remember, I've just had the benefit of going to a third world country. Uh, 20, 24 hours ago, I was on another continent. Um, they struggle with a lack of resources, a lack of expertise, and a lack of coordination and um, you know, in, institutional strength. He saw firsthand how fortunate San Antonio is compared to other parts of the nation and compared to other countries. San Antonio's biggest strength is our military and our medical center, our biotech um, sector. Uh, and so if ever you wanted to be somewhere during the pandemic, it's San Antonio. Councilman Palias adds that this is not a time for panic. Be smart, be safe, wash your hands, and take the proper precautions. The ending message here, Max, is I'm not doing this because I feel sick, right? I'm not doing this because I think I've got COVID or my, my kids have COVID. I'm doing this out of an abundance precaution to keep my neighbors, my coworkers, and my parents from getting sick. Max Massey. Case out 12 news. We are seeing businesses all across the nation make changes to their daily routines in an attempt to fight the coronavirus outbreak. Here in San Antonio, small businesses are finding creative ways to make sure their clientele is served, all while practicing social distancing. Devin Clark gives us a look. We should be full. For the first time in seven years, Tina Kent is making some drastic changes to the way she runs her Northside restaurant. So right now we're trying to make a human decision that's not about money, not about profitability. On your average morning, it's not unusual to see 20 to 30 customers here at the bread box, but today it's completely empty. Everything is going to be strictly curbside carryout or delivery at this moment. Customers who came with empty stomachs say that they appreciate the changes. Appreciate their respect for the situation and, and the health of the community. Meanwhile, Kent has come up with some creative ways to make sure her customers' needs are still met. We are also offering grocery staples like milk and eggs and bread and flour and sugar. Welcome to help for some parents. We have a little child at home, so make sure we have food to feed her. Changes at the Smoke Shack on Broadway are also aimed at reducing unnecessary contact. All of our condiments, pickles, onions, everything's in separate baggies you know no one there's no communal you know area where everyone's just digging into something owner chris conger says that they will also start a curbside service tomorrow as social distancing recommendations continue to increase amid the coronavirus outbreak business owners are trying to stay ahead of the curve what is it that we can do to be progressive and helpful and hopeful devin clark ksat 12 news as the number of COVID-19 cases grows across the country and with more people opting to stay home, Meals on Wheels is making preparations to continue helping those who need it the most. Stephanie Cerna met up with staff and volunteers this afternoon as they continued to deliver meals. How can they be delivering? They're afraid to be catching the height. There's this, this virus. Basilia Guzman says she was very grateful, but a little surprised when Meals on Wheels showed up on her doorstep today. My husband and I had three strokes at one heart attack, and I had breast cancer, so it's hard for us to do anything. So I just want to thank Meals on Wheels for doing all this for us. And thank you. But fears surrounding the coronavirus not stopping the dozens of volunteers who showed up to Meals on Wheels this morning to pick up meals for their clients. You have to try to make life go on as much as possible, within reason, of course. I have an elderly mother, 87, who lives in Sweden, and I can't help her right now, But and she's fine, but it's, it, I, it's the American way, isn't it, volunteering? And for now, volunteers are still making the rounds, but the staff at Meals of Wills, they tell us that they will continue to deliver meals as long as they can to make sure that the clients get everything they need. It's a crucial lifeline that we offer to those that we serve, and we want to make sure that they know that we're still here for them. Meals on Wheels reporting that at some point it might primarily be the staff without volunteers making those deliveries. Their hope is not to have an interruption in service, but they are preparing for everything. We are trying to prepare and make sure that our clients are aware of what's happening and that we're going to be working to get them extra food so that they have extra food in case there's an interruption in our services. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Much needed services. Well, USAA digging deep to help local nonprofits during this coronavirus pandemic, donating one million dollars. That money will be divided among the San Antonio Food Bank, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, Meals on Wheels, Haven for Hope and United Way of San Antonio. USAA CEO Wayne Peacock says the donation is to help those organizations, quote, serving our most vulnerable residents, end quote. 
The donation coming a day after a San Antonio USAA employee tested positive for COVID-19. But we're told that employee hasn't been back to the USAA campus since March 6th. And our coverage of the coronavirus outbreak goes even deeper on our website, ksat.com. All the stories we've done on air and online are in one spot with constant updates on the impact of COVID-19. That means closures, which now includes the Alamo, cancellations, and the government response from the federal, state, and local level. You can find it all right there on the homepage of our website at ksat.com. We've got some breaking news. We want to take you with Transguide right now. This is the t this is time saver traffic. Uh, I believe this is near I-35 in Riddiman. Bill, our producer, is that correct? Yeah, I-35 in Riddiman, and you can see a vehicle right at the intersection here that is involved in some type of accident. We are told that person may have to be extracted from the vehicle, perhaps what they call the jaws of life to get that person actually out of the vehicle. Again, this is I-35 at Riddiman. It looks to me like it's the southbound lanes of I-35. Uh, you can see they have the exit to 410 completely blocked off there. Again, we're breaking news right now as they try to figure out how to get to the person in that vehicle. That's right at the apex where the exit to 410 and I-35 South continues. We'll continue to monitor this situation. Hey everybody, Myra Arthur here. Wanted to let you know why I am not with you tonight. Just like you're doing, KSAT is taking all the necessary precautions to try to prevent the spread right now. Social distancing, having people work from home when we can. And in my case, because yes, I am still so very pregnant, our company has graciously and responsibly agreed that it's not a great idea for me to be in and out of the office right now. So I am home, I am staying healthy, staying safe. We're all washing our hands and doing our very best to stay positive as I hope that you all are right now. I'm in the playroom at my house where we are playing with all the things to try to help us get through this crazy time period. I know just like you are. I hope to have some good news to share with you soon, hopefully a good positive update that we could all use and um, I'll be talking with you then. And yes, Adam Kasky, this is a little preview of Fiesta Hair for that party with a purpose that we'll get to later, San Antonio. Talk soon, bye-bye. Good to see Myra. It is, and the Fiesta Hair. I, all I ask is okay, Fiesta, federal holidays and KSAT birthdays, right? Can't you just have it more often? KSAT birthdays? You know, when everybody... Just your birthday, right? No, when anybody in the newsroom has a birthday. <laughs> yeah. That hair is great for getting confetti stuck in it. Anyway, aquifer, no change today. We're about two and a half feet above the March average. Here's our pollen count. Now, mold actually jumped today. It's high with a count of over 8,500. Oak is moderate. I'm surprised it was measured at moderate. Hackberry and mulberry are on the low end. It's basically peak oak season here soon. At least on average, we peak in late March and early April. We did have some rain last night. We have better rain chances coming down the pike. Talk about that and a cold front coming up. Amid COVID-19 concerns, a crucial and life-saving message from the battered women and children shelter in Bear County. The shelter is open and no services have been canceled. I'm Courtney Freeman. Coming up tonight, we'll explain just a few little tweaks being made when it comes to social distancing. All right, you may notice we are practicing social distancing here. It's a little tough. I, still, I feel like I I'm to yell at you over there. I still like ECs. I still like Adam. I still like Greg. But we are being you're practicing what we preach here yeah. at KSAT. And uh, that includes the weather segment here where we bring Adam in to talk about exactly you know, how gray this day was. Yeah, it's so weird doing it this way. I'm looking <laughs> off this way. It looks like I'm looking off screen. Yeah. But I'm looking at them here in our studio because... We like each other. We like to be near each other, but in these times, unfortunately, we just can't be doing that. So we can still bring you our message, though, and bring you the forecast, which does include more promising rain chances and get ready for a potent cold front to hit us later this week. All right, speaking of rainfall, check out what happened last night. We had a good soaker. Valverde County, parts of the hill country, Edwards Plateau. We're talking over an inch of rain. I even heard from a few folks that picked up a couple of inches. So it was it was a good soaker, but it trickled out by the time it made it to San Antonio. Here, a trace. 
at the airport. That's it. Stinson picked up two hundredths of an inch, but we only had a trace in, at San Antonio International. 79 was our high today. That's five degrees above average. And right now we're at 77 and we do have some breaks in the clouds and a little bit of sunshine. The conditions we had outside today are going to be very common for the next several days until we get to about Friday. And that's when we're going to see these temperatures really plummet with a cold front right now. Spring like out there 80 Port SA 81 Castroville. 75 in Comfort, 74 Bulverde and Canyon Lake, you're at 71, with some lower 80s southwest of town, Creasel Springs and Catula at 82. And we feel the humidity. Dew points are in the 60s, so we're in the muggy category. Not quite at those oppressive levels yet. It's not that time of year, but we do notice the mugginess out there, at least for now. I mentioned that Friday cold front. That's going to have a big impact on the humidity levels, and we're really going to see that humidity dive by Friday into the upcoming weekend, at least temporarily. As for rain right now, a few little coastal showers have popped up from Victoria northward up 77. We've even even seen them cycling through Hallettsville uh, periodically here over the past couple of hours, and I think this activity is going to diminish and really die off as we lose our daytime heating. And there could be a shower later tonight along the Rio Grande and some areas uh, just east of the river there with some of the leftover activity that's starting to form over the mountains of Mexico. All right, so here's a wider view and what's really driving everything. We still have this southwesterly flow aloft, which has within it embedded disturbances and basically pieces of energy that are being thrown overhead. So we do have an isolated storm chance or shower chance here and there uh, throughout basically every day this week. But those rain chances climb a lot by Friday because this upper level swirl we have just west of San Francisco, that's going to cross over the Rockies and by Friday it should slam us with a cold front and that should give us better chances of rainfall. So here's the breakdown for you. 66 tomorrow morning with the fog and drizzle to start the day. We're used to that in this pattern over the past week or two. And then just a 20% chance of a few pop up showers or a brief storm the rest of the day tomorrow. So isolated here and there 80 degrees, the high temperature. Rain chances spike a little bit Tuesday night, mostly west of town. We're giving it about a 50% chance. I think it's going to be a same scenario as what we had last night. Then only 20% the rest of Wednesday, 30% Thursday. But look what happens when that cold front arrives on Friday. We're looking at a little more widespread activity with that cold front, some thunderstorms, and it looks like behind that front, low clouds often on areas of light rain lasting into the weekend. But Look at the temperatures. We go from 82 on Thursday down into the 50s by Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, and even on into Sunday. So get ready for some big time changes that'll be coming our way. Always a little easier to stay home when the weather's like that, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Friday's going to be perfect. Stay inside. OK, all right. Thank you, Adam. Very happy to see the Spurs stepping up today, Greg, and helping out some of their employees and all this uncertainty with COVID-19. But keep in mind that Spurs had at least 19 games left in the regular season. Right. The suspension went into effect. That's a lot of money to a lot of people who are depending on that income. And today, Spurs Sports and Entertainment step up. They come to the rescue of a lot of their part-time employees who are depending on this cash. And also, we come back, the Texans' big-time questionable trade coming up. With the possibility of the suspension of play and all of sports to be extended for the total of eight weeks, Spurs Sports and Entertainment has announced a formation of a fund of over $500,000 that will ensure the organization's part-time employees will be paid through the end of the Spurs and the Rampage regular seasons. The Spurs had 19 games left on their regular season schedule when Commissioner Adam Silver announced the immediate suspension of the season last week when Jazz All-Star Center Rudy Gorbert tested positive for COVID-19. Now the CDC is recommending a continued suspension of all events involving 50 or more for at least eight weeks. Spurs Sports and Entertainment Chairman Peter J. Holt making the announcement that will help SS&E employees to get through this rough time. And he says in part during this release, as San Antonio feels the ripple effects of the difficult decisions we have all had to make because of the global pandemic, we now that we know that few will feel this more than members of our community, which rely on hourly and part-time employment to take care of their families. I'm pleased to say that after spending the last few days examining every option together, our leadership team has found a way to ensure that these investments Valuable members of the SSNE family will be provided for. They're taking care of the people because we're like a family around here. We've got all, everybody's, you know, we all work together and consider ourselves family. 
So it, it helps out, I'm sure, to a lot of them. He's there every game. When Commissioner Adam Silver first announced the suspension of the NBA season, it was first thought to take only a month to get restarted, but now due to the new CDC recommendations, that restart may not be available until mid-May, with most NBA owners feeling the season will not resume before June. The question now is how will it be when the season resumes? Will there be some regular season games left on the schedule, or will the league just decide to just take the top eight teams in both the Western and Eastern Conference and restart with the playoffs, and maybe even a truncated version of the postseason? And if it does, most feel it'll be without fans in the stands. The Spurs are supposed to play the Memphis Grizzlies tonight in one of the 18 games left of the regular season schedule. And instead, nothing but a shuttered practice facility and AT&T Center for the remaining immediate future. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys did what we expected that they would do today. They have franchise tagged their star quarterback, Dak Prescott, and tried working out on a new long-term agreement to keep wide receiver Amari Cooper wearing the star. But late word today, that attempt has failed. The Cowboys had until noon today to make their decision to keep Prescott and his representatives for speaking to other teams during the free agent period. That succeeded, and then they were left with no choice when Prescott turned down the latest offer of $33.5 million a season with $105 million of that guarantee. If the two sides cannot reach an agreement by July 15th, then Prescott will play the 2020 season with a salary between 30 and $33 million. Under the new collective bargaining agreement, there is no transition tag left to use on Cooper. That's why the Cowboys chose to tag Prescott, try to reach a long-term deal with Cooper's team. But according to the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, late today that has failed. Now Coop is a free agent. The Houston Texans have made their first blockbuster trade of the NFL season as they have traded wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins and a late round draft pick to the Arizona Cardinals in exchange for running back David Johnson, a second round pick and a fourth round pick as well in 2021. And the Texans will absorb all of Johnson's salary after he signed a three year, $39 million con contract extension last year with his best year in 2016 far behind him. Our San Antonio Missions, or I should say our San Antonio Spurs, not the only local sports franchise seeing their season put on hold. Our San Antonio Missions, originally set to batter up on April the 9th at home, will now see the start of the AAA season delayed, just like Major League Baseball. This is a sport that uh, you really got to ramp up to. Uh, you know, I mean, baseball, the pitchers need some time to to uh, get their arms uh, ready to go uh, for the season. So, uh, you know, depending how long they're, uh, you know, not at spring training, uh, it's going to keep setting us back. You know, and Burrow brings up an excellent point because once they've decided here to actually go ahead with the season, then it becomes a question of when do they actually start, given the fact, you know, they can't just jumpstart a season. Right. You kind of have to work your way into it. So it'll take a few days, if not a few weeks, to actually get the season started again. And that's a big difference between the NBA and Major League Baseball. Huge difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. It's still to come at 6, the San Antonio Food Bank now dealing with a new season of need during this coronavirus outbreak. How the nonprofit preparing to help the counties, and more importantly, the people it serves. And the federal government with an update on how it's responding on the national level. Coming up next. The federal government, state governments, and the healthcare industry all implementing drastic measures as they try to flatten the curve, as they say, and stop the spread of COVID-19. As Inez Delicatera reports, the extraordinary steps all having a profound effect on the lives of everyday Americans. Officials across the country taking drastic measures to combat the novel coronavirus. New Jersey becoming the first state to implement a curfew. Residents no longer allowed to travel between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. And with new CDC guidelines urging Americans to cancel or postpone gatherings of 50 people or more, the restaurant industry is taking a big hit. At least 10 states shutting down dine-in service. My administration is recommending that all Americans, including the young and healthy work to engage in schooling from home when possible, avoid gathering in groups of more than 10 people. The trade group for another hard hit industry, the airlines, saying a pessimistic analysis they conducted shows air carriers could lose more than $50 billion by June. To help soften the economic blow, the Federal Reserve lowering interest rates to near 0%. But that move prompting the Dow to plunge, the S&P 500 index declining by 7% this morning, triggering a 15-minute trading halt. 
President Trump urging Americans not to hoard household supplies. But images of a Costco in Commerce, California show that's easier said than done. Officials warning the outbreak could get worse before it gets better. Now's the time to really lean into mitigation strategies, social distancing, making sure you're washing your hands frequently. In a tweet, the president said his video conference call with governors this morning went very well, but that New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has to do more. The president's attack comes after Cuomo criticized the White House's response to the outbreak. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. The first step in developing a safe vaccine for COVID-19 happening in Washington state today. A coronavirus vaccine trial has administered their first dose. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases is funding the trial. 45 healthy adults are participating in the six week trial. Each will get two injections about a month apart in varying doses. The goal here is to prove the vaccine is safe and that the patient's immune systems respond. This doesn't mean that a vaccine will be available soon though. Experts say proving the vaccine is effective will require follow-up studies involving many more participants and will take many more months. Let's just hope it works. The financial strain of COVID-19 could bankrupt some major airlines by the end of May. That's what one group is projecting. They say that's when most carriers will be out of money. Europe's biggest low cost carrier says it will ground most of its fleet over the next seven to 10 days. That follows the biggest cutback by Delta in its history and United Airlines cut its capacity in half. U.S. Airlines hit hard by the coronavirus, asking for an aid package from the federal government that could up, add up to $50 billion. America's major airlines are projected to run out of cash sometime between June 30th and the end of the year without help. That's according to one trade group. Well, the White House Easter egg roll, yet another annual event that is being called off due to the coronavirus. First Lady Melania Trump canceled it after the CDC recommended the cancellation or postponement of gatherings of more than 50 people for two months. The White House Easter egg roll tradition officially goes back to 1878. It went on hiatus for several years during both world wars. It was originally scheduled for April 13th. Back here at home, the San Antonio Food Bank says the coronavirus has brought a new season of need for those living in the 16 southwest Texas counties that the bank serves. The food bank says it's ramping up additional services to meet those needs and they're putting out the call for more volunteers to help. Part of the plan is to add extra food and supplies to the 10,000 plus seniors who receive a Project Hope box each month. There's also a plan in place for volunteers to help the food bank figure out where there are gaps in service, including areas where families and children who are out of school are most in need. The food bank has ramped up services. We've had the need one for extra volunteers, which is kind of a challenge, right? When the city said, hey, stay at home, but the food banks needs that volunteers to keep our efficiency. And so we found some great partners to do that, but we still need more. Secondly, we're really trying to ramp up with the gift of a dollar. Igera says that one dollar equals 10 pounds of food, which goes straight back into the community. Well, e-commerce giant Amazon feeling the effects of the coronavirus. What the company is saying is more customers turn to online shopping for their necessities. It's still to come. Plus, a Vegas wedding chapel making some changes to help lovebirds hold on to that dream of a Las Vegas wedding. How they're making sure people who can't be there can still be part of it. Welcome live to the set for KSAT News at 9. And tonight's show is going to be a little bit different. KSAT News at 9 has been working on a deep dive into the woman known as the killer nurse, Janine Jones. That is still scheduled to run tonight during the nine o'clock news. And of course, we also know that with all of the coronavirus news coming in, people are going to want the very latest on the situation with that. So we have a lot coming up on the news at nine regarding coronavirus. Right, all of the latest information. Here's what we're gonna do right at nine. We're gonna give you the latest numbers on the coronavirus pandemic, give you a rundown of what you need to know, what exactly happened today, both locally and 
across the country and across the world. And there is certainly a lot that happened yeah. today. Then after that, in a killer's care, that is our 45 minute mini documentary about one of Texas's most shocking suspected serial killers. That will play right after the news at nine. Yeah, Janine Jones, Paul Venema and others give us a great insight into what happened. You can watch it tonight on KSAT.com or anywhere you stream. We've got you covered. KSAT News at 9. Right now, let's go back into the studio with Adam Kasky. Adam. And we're looking outside with live cam. We have a mixture of sun and clouds out there right now, but that was after a rather dreary start with fog and drizzle and get ready for more of the same as we go into tomorrow morning. So I want to talk about our weather headlines and what we're focusing on here. Really more of the same tomorrow and I would argue for the next couple of days, but better rain chances are coming down the pike by the end of the week and into the weekend. And that's going to be associated with a potent cold front that arrives on Friday morning. I'm going to be back to talk about all of this in your full forecast coming up. This virus is not stopping love. When people are in love, they're gonna come, they're gonna celebrate their friends and family. Even today, we have several groups uh, from 16 different states, three different countries, and we have large weddings, two or three of them above 80 guests. The virus won't stop love. A Las Vegas, <laughs> love wedding, cha a Las Vegas wedding chapel helping bring people together virtually. Chapel of the Flowers celebrating its 60th anniversary Saturday by marrying 55 couples. Those with family or friends who couldn't make the service in person, had the option to tune in to the service via a live web stream. Or was it a love web stream? <laughs> there you go. Well, another big <laughs> entertainment event is being pushed back due to the coronavirus. The Academy of Country Music Awards was scheduled to happen on April 5th in Las Vegas. The exact date the show is going to happen still to be determined, but the Academy is eyeing September, at least for now. The Academy CEO says in a statement, quote, we look forward to identifying a future date that we can celebrate our country community safely, end quote. And if you're turning to Amazon for most of your shopping, you could see a little bit of a slowdown from their normal shipping times. The e-commerce giant says it's seen a surge online or for of online shopping due to the coronavirus. That's the reason customers could experience those shipping delays. Yeah, Amazon is not immune to a stock shortage. The company says it is out of some popular items like a lot of household staples. Amazon also working to combat price gouging sellers. It pulled more than 1 million products earlier this month because of price gouging and false advertising. I can't believe people are out there trying to. Unbelievable. Yeah, I know. Meantime, a popular bear is getting the spotlight on March the 16th. Today is National Panda Day. The black and white bears are instantly recognizable. They're also among the world's most endangered species. Yeah, less than 1900 live in the wild despite breeding programs. About 100 pandas live in zoos around the world. And while they have a sweet disposition, they tend to keep to themselves. They mostly eat plants. They do not hibernate in the winter like most bears. I did not know that. I thought pandas just hibernated like other bears. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I never thought about it, but you then watch the videos from- And they're, they're, they're frolicking yeah, in, in the, the snow. snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I didn't never put two and two together like that, but you're right. Huh. Interesting fact about panda bears. Yeah. They always look so happy when they're sitting there eating their bear. And cute. They, yeah, they yeah. do. They, they do. Everybody's a sweet spot for them. Anyway, let's talk about our rain chances, okay? We've got a few pop-up showers on the radar right now. Insignificant, unfortunately. Just a few little hits out there on the radar screen, and that's it. Not expecting them to last all that much longer. You see into Lavaca County, we still have a few little sprinkles, even clipping eastern Gonzales County. There's that activity, and yeah, it's not amounting to much, and mostly it's dissipating and fizzling out as we lose our daytime heating. Otherwise, a decent amount of cloud cover across South Texas, but some of us are squeezing in a decent little sunset. Oh, check this out. I love this. All right, look, the, the bats are back. Notice this on the radar screen the past couple of evenings. Look at that. That's the signature of the bats leaving one of the caves west of San Antonio. So, hey, welcome back our Mexican free tail bats and whatever other species are out there. Anyway, take a look at our overall pattern and the upper level flow is coming off the Pacific Ocean again. This is very similar to what we had last week. See the wind coming off the Pacific. It has a decent amount of moisture in it and cloud cover up above us. And not only that, some little bursts of energy as well. So an isolated pop up shower here and there. Yeah, definitely possible every day. 
I think an even greater chance of rain along the border and in parts of the hill country tomorrow night. But as we get to the end of the week, it's when this upper level swirl, that disturbance near San Francisco, that's going to start working in our favor. Right now, it's got some good moisture and really dumping some some of that moisture, rain and snow over parts of California. Well, that upper disturbance is going to cross the Rockies later this week. When it does that, it's going to develop a pretty potent cold front, and that's going to be our Friday cold front that hits us. So look what happens to our rain chances. Just 20% tomorrow and Wednesday. Thursday, still isolated at 30%. Then by Friday and Saturday, we're boosting those rain chances up to 60%, mainly because of that cold front dropping in and the type of weather that we'll have behind the cold front on Saturday. Temperatures are going to take a big hit, though, with that boundary. Rain chances go up, temperatures go down. It's that kind of a cold front. Speaking of temperatures, most of the state in the 60s and 70s, 87 in Laredo. That's one of the hotter locations, still low 80s from Del Rio to Carrizo Springs and Catula. Here in town, we're at 77. And we have that wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico, so we notice the humidity outside. Its dew points are in the low to mid 60s, so you feel the mugginess, typical spring-like humidity that's in the air. And it's good to have this around when a cold front arrives because that boosts your rain chances a bit. And we're going to have it for the rest of the work week until we get into Friday. That's when we'll see, I think, the dew point and the humidity really fall off throughout the day. And into Saturday, it's going to be more of a kind of winter-like dew point and moisture content in the air, but we'll still squeeze some rain out of it. So here's an, a factor I want to consider for tomorrow is our visibility again. We had some fog this morning, and here's our future cast, and we are anticipating more reduced visibility for the morning commute tomorrow uh, just overall dampness as well and then by about 10 11 a.m the sun will be working through those clouds enough to break up that uh, that fog and we'll have better visibility by the noon hour so other than the fog and drizzle tomorrow morning some peaks of sunshine later in the day just that 20 percent chance of a pop-up shower here or there 80 degrees the high temperature and then tomorrow night we're expecting better rain chances especially west of san antonio Another thunderstorm complex could come in from Mexico, so we do have the chance of those thunderstorms generally west of I-35 tomorrow night. Minimal rain chances through Thursday. There they jump on Friday, but look at the temperature plunge. I mean, we're talking going from 82 on Thursday down into the 50s by Friday afternoon, and it looks like we'll stay there for high temperatures in the 50s, even as we get into the upcoming weekend. But right now, at least the rain chances are looking a little more promising. Stephen Easy. It's going to be and rainy, yeah. Going to be a strange St. Patrick's Day mm -hmm. tomorrow. Very strange, yeah. It's almost hard to even think of. Normally, you kind of think of it, oh, hey, what's going on? What are we going to do? And yeah. It's honestly not even on my mind. Yeah. Right. I'll wear green, but. Sure. I'll join you. Oh, if, right. I, if I remember, I'll wear <laughs> Thank green. Thank you, <laughs> Yes. In case you missed it, it's coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. Social distancing shutdowns. Now there is word of a possible shot to stop coronavirus. As cases of COVID-19 continue to grow across the globe, the United States has taken its first step in testing an experimental vaccine. Today, the first dose given to a healthy volunteer in Seattle, Washington, part of a six-week trial conducted by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. 45 participants will receive two injections of varying doses about a month apart to prove the vaccine is safe. Then more studies will take place to prove the vaccine is effective. Testing for that could take several months though. Meantime, we have just learned that the Alamo has now closed its doors as a response to new COVID-19 guidelines. The news came just hours after we learned that a doctor with University Hospital is tested positive for the virus. It is the latest travel related case in Bear County. Don't panic. A panic demic could be worse than a pandemic. That's the message of San Antonio City Councilman, who is now self quarantining, wants to convey to the rest of the city. I'm doing this out of an abundance precaution to keep my neighbors, my co-workers, and my parents from getting sick. Via taking extra steps to make sure that those who need a ride to work, need to go to the doctor, or even make the trip to the grocery store are safe. Via says 
seats, rails, and handles on its buses, buses and vans and in its facilities are all being regularly disinfected. They say restrooms are being cleaned three times a day to reduce the risk of infection. And before we go, Chick-fil-A making a big change by closing its dining rooms temporarily in response to the coronavirus. The change says it's trying to limit person to person contact. All locations still plan to offer drive through services. However, locations that offer takeout, curbside delivery or mobile order options will vary by location. In addition to that, some locations may also alter their operating hours. No word yet on when the dining rooms may reopen. And in just a few days, nice warm chicken sandwich, maybe some hot chocolate. Yeah, you know, you may want that comfort food by Friday and into the weekend. Not tomorrow, more of the same tomorrow. 66 in the morning with some fog and drizzle and then 80 in the afternoon and humid. Rain chances spike on Friday. This is why we're talking hot cocoa. Hot chicken sandwich or something. Mac and cheese. Ooh, sounds Ooh. good, right? Tortilla soup. Ooh. Yes, yeah. there you in go. the 50s. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, that's the way it's looking with some passing showers as well. Right now, rain chances are looking more promising at that point with that front. It doesn't have to be cold, though, for me to want tortilla soup. No. <laughs> All time is <laughs> Exactly. Every day. <laughs> we'll see you online at 9 and on the night beat at 10. Good night.